Hello, my name is Hiramus, and this is Cooking Up Crime, where I talk about true crime and eat various foods while I do it. This is like Olive Garden food. It's angel hair with various veggies and scampi sauce. It's the best. Anyway, is it vegan? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but we're just going to give it the benefit of the doubt. Today, we're talking about, I, okay, I'm Italian by birth. I'm not Italian by culture. I have no idea how to pronounce most of these names. Giella Tofano. We're talking about her. Anyway, she was really cool. I like her a lot. We're going to season this up some more. She was born in 1620 in Palermo, Italy. And they were thought that she was the daughter of Dofana Adam, Ad, Adamo. I'm sorry. Anyway, who was executed on July 22nd of 1633 because they thought that she killed her husband. And this all plays into this all plays into later, just so you know. There are a couple of theories as to how she became the person she is. One theory is that, maybe you can hear me better if I actually have the mic like relatively near me. Anyway, one theory is that she just spent a lot of time in apothecaries and like that's what she found interesting. And then she ended up making her own poison in an apothecary she like visited or worked at. Another theory is that her mother invented the poison and then passed the recipe down to her. She actually ended up passing down the recipe for the poison to her daughter, Girolamo Spera. This poison is very controversial for various reasons. I just like can't season my food enough apparently. It don't look right, it's not the right color yet. Her poison was called Aqua Tofana. In Naples and Rome, Tofana sold her poison to women who wanted to kill their husbands. It was disguised as a makeup. Tofana herself was a widow and people don't really know if she poisoned her husband or not. Some people think she did, because for obvious reasons. The poison was thought to have been laced with arsenic, lead, and belladonna. Belladonna's nightshade, in case you were wondering. Basically, the plan was the person would put a drop in the person's food. So, like, the woman would put a drop in her husband's food over the course of four days, and it would kill her husband, like, all of a sudden, without suspicion. Nobody could taste or smell the poison and had no color. You could really put it in anything. This flies by me. Why is this fly oh, make it a, always making a guest appearance in my videos? I just don't understand. So you could actually just put it in anything. You could put it in soup and tea and water, whatever they drank, wine. I wouldn't suggest putting it on a steak, but like, it was disguised as first a powdered makeup, but then it kind of went into little vials marked Mana of St. Nicholas, which was a liquid for helping and healing acne. St. Nicholas was known for getting prostitutes off the streets and saving them by paying their debts to whoever they owed. Let's lower you for a second. Beautiful. It was reported that Tofana friend befriended a priest named Girolama, Father Girolama, sorry, and he gave her the arsenic. The first dose of the poison would cause like just mild discomfort and like exhaustion, maybe a headache, general weakness. The second dose caused stomach aches, thirst, and vomiting a little bit more severe i cannot stand vomiting it is the worst thing in the world so i had like a fit a couple years ago where i literally threw up 36 times in about two hours and it was the worst thing in the world i hated it. i hated every second of it. it i thought i was dying the idea was to get the husband to think he was dying so that he would get get all of his affairs in order usually leading to like people the husband leaving all of like the family's wealth and property to his wife just getting like his will in order because like not many 35 year olds have a will although the life expectancy was really low back then were these like teenager people is this like a 12 year old girl killing like a 19 year old boy who knows i guess it doesn't matter they were abusive usually by using the third or fourth dose the man would die so out he goes the wife would then order an autopsy after the husband died um just to like reduce suspicion about her but nothing would come up because the poisons wouldn't come up in the body systems at that time but there was kind of like some suspicion that could have been brought because the husband would die with no fever inflammation or pain which were like the three pillars of illness back then so poison was kind of like thought of as like the woman's weapon of choice in the renaissance period um a lot of poisons were disguised as makeup so i don't know if tafana was the first one she wasn't the last either like for instance belladonna was really popular because it dilated your eyes and big pupils were thought of as being really beautiful back then but belladonna also blinded you so like what's the truth tavana felt obligated to help women of lower statuses escape marriages and because of this she actually got a lot of referrals from her clients and she had a lot of business as a result of this we have to take into consideration the time period this was. So this was the Renaissance where there was arranged marriages where you literally bought girls 
with like money or things and the woman had no possibility for divorce because like you were not considered a person you couldn't file for divorce really men could like do whatever they wanted to you without any repercussions the law saw no problem with it it was socially acceptable at the time it was really disturbing and so sometimes when you're in an abusive relationship and you feel like there's no way out, you gotta do what you gotta do. Tofana actually ran her business for about 20 years without ever being caught. Kind of a good success rate for an assassin business. Wow. Anyway. So eventually, the story goes, a customer bought Aqua Tofana from Tofana, gave it to her husband, and as her husband was going to eat his poisoned soup, she regretted it and threw the soup away. And he made her tell the whole story, in which the authorities were like not okay with. And they were like, Tafana. But then all the local people actually protected Tafana from authority punishment. Sure. She actually found sanctuary in a church because she was friends with the father. But then someone started spreading rumors that she had poisoned the water supply in Rome. So the police went in and got her, like by force broke down the doors. Tovana was then captured and tortured, and during this torture she confessed to killing over 600 men. But this cannot be confirmed because people confess to crazy things when they're being tortured. I'm sure if you're watching this you're a fan of true crime and you understand this fact, but in case you don't know this is your first time around, people confess to crazy things when they're being tortured or when they're being interrogated for hours or when you've had a grown man yelling at you for three days, you'll say anything to get out of there. And also they kind of play with your mind and make you believe it. They put words in your mouth and they start making you believe that you did something that you didn't do. And also they were torturing her. Like they were probably just beating her up. And she was probably like, can't do this no more. Gotta go. In July of 1659, Tafana was executed with her daughter and three of her helpers. Some people believe that she actually wasn't killed until 1709. After her execution, regardless, she was thrown over the wall of the church that held her. Kind of upsetting, but like, you know. 40 of her clients were actually tracked down and executed as well. Others were imprisoned in a dungeon and just locked up to starve to death. The richer clients were actually given private executions of being strangled in prison, and the poor ones were given up for public torture for like entertainment and humiliation. What were people doing back then? Tavana is actually known as one of the most prolific serial killers in history. There are no pictures of her, there are no portraits of her. No one has any idea what she looks like. And not that much is actually known about her, hence this short video. And Tofana's business was not that uncommon at the time because Rome had a high crime rate and a lot of people acting in self-interest at the time. And Tofana's sitting there helping people, so... Mozart, on his deathbed, had claimed that he had been poisoned with Aqua Tofana. And this has never been proven, and people think don't think that it actually happened. But it does speak to her legacy, that after even after 100 years after she'd been dead, people were still talking about her. She was just a saint. Put her in the books, kids. And nobody even talks about her. We do a whole lesson on the Renaissance in school. Nobody talks about her. How upsetting. Anyway, this is a very short video of Aqua Tefano. And Giela Tefano. I can't pronounce anything. I'm so sorry. Anyway, this is the last video you'll see in this house. Because I'm actually moving. This video upload tomorrow. And I'm leaving on Monday to move. And I don't think I'll have a video ready for next Saturday. But we'll see. Um, but until then, have a good day. I want you to forget your past lives and find me the new Christ. I want your heart to melt like ice in the midst of July.